Hi guys, Mr. Hill here with your English lesson for today. We're going to carry on with our biography. We're looking at Christopher Marlowe's biography. We're going to create our box up today. So to know what we're doing for our box up, we need to have a look at the template that we're going to roughly follow. Now, obviously, we can't give you this as a hard copy, so you're going to need to draw it out in, on a piece of paper. So if you remember how we do it in class, we have three columns, don't we? So we have the column for the box up from our model text and then the column that's got the information that we're trying to do. So you might want to take a moment just to write down the titles for each of the rows that you're going to need. OK, got that done? Right, let's move on. We have our introduction, the names and dates, the key facts that the biography is going to talk about, the early life where and when they were born, their education and any other key events from their early life, the link to their career. So what event links their early life to their working life? How do they get to their job? Their working life and career, what is their job? Normally related to what's made them famous, any key events and any life changing moments. Their end of life, so what events have led up to their death? Any key events that have happened in that build up? And finally, our conclusion, summing up the information and discussing why the person is important. The areas we're going to focus on today are their early life. So Kit Marlowe, Christopher Marlowe's early life. Where was he born? When was he born? Where did he go to school? What key events took place? the link to his career. So what event links his early life with his career? How did he get his job? And the end of his life as well. So the events that led up to their death or his death in this case. And again, any key events that have happened around it. So we've all read through this a few times now. I'm not going to go over it again. I want to get straight into modeling, going through pulling together the relevant information that we're going to need. So we're going to focus on this paragraph here that's circled in green. This has got the information we need for our first box, so the early life box. So the first thing we need to find where and when they were born. So if we look at our first paragraph, we've got Canterbury as the place of birth. So I'm going to put that down in my box up. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to look. When was he born? February the 26th. Here we go. So it's in there as well. So I can write that down into my box up. That was the year 1564. Now there's an extra bit of information here we can add on. So I'm just going to put that here. So I'm going to say, just put in notes, baptised the same day. So I've got that part now. So we've got where he was born, when he was born, and an extra bit of information that we can add in. We'll look at his education. So he started off at King's School. So I'm going to do this in note form. So King's School. And then he went from there. He got a scholarship to Corpus Christi, which is a college of Cambridge very famous university in the in England. So we've got Corpus Christi College. Okay, I'm just going to go back and check my spellings, make sure I've got those right. Corpus and Christi, yes I have. And I'm going to put where that is as well. That's going to have to go on the next line so I don't have to squash it in. Okay, so I'm going to put in here the dates as well. So late 1850 until 1857. 
Now I've missed off the fact that he had a scholarship. So I'm just going to add the note in, in here. And again, I'm going to come back and just double check my spelling. There we are. Right. So he went to King's School. He got a scholarship to Corpus Christi College in Cambridge. He was there from late 1850 until 1857. Now, key events. I'm going to come and look at my second paragraph for this. So he earned his degree in 1854. But as we know, he didn't get it awarded. So he didn't get his master's degree until 1857 because there was something there was something not right there. There was the university were hesitant in giving it to him. So he earned his degree in 1857. So his master's, so that's an extra three years of study to top up your degree and make it into a more rounded education. So his master's, 1857. So we're going to put university hesitated to awards. And then we have this mysterious letter that was delivered from the Privy Council. So hesitated to award until a letter from the Privy Council. So I'm going to leave it like that. I could add in some extra information. Actually, I probably should because the letter could have said anything. So I'm going to add that on. So I'm going to use the words from there. So declaring that. And then I'm going to leave that blank. Save me writing it all out and you having to watch me write it. So I'm going to have that there. So what's in the, in the um, inverted commas there? It's important to have it there in what we've written. So that gives us our first box. We've got where and when he was born. We've got when he was baptised as well, his education, starting off at King's School, moving on to Corpus Christi. The date he earned his degree. And then we've got this key event that occurred around him being awarded his master's where the university hesitated. And then we had the letter from the Privy Council declaring that he was working on matters touching the benefit of his country. So moving forward to the next box, this is the paragraph we're going to get our information from. So our next box is, box is the link to his career. So we don't know what that letter actually said. So we're going to touch on that in what we've got here. So I'm just going to put contents of the letter unknown because we don't know what was in that letter. So I'm going to leave it as that. So how did they get to their job? So he left Cambridge and moved to London. So I'm just going to, again, as notes, he moved to London and began writing full time. That's the information I'm going to take out of there, because, again, I'm keeping this as notes. I don't want to write a full paragraphs in here. So he moved to London and began writing full time. 
So I might just make one last bullet point here. So I might just add in the hint that he was engaged as a spy. So oh, it says secret agents. I'm going to use that wording. So possibly a secret agent for Sir Francis Walsingham. Now I've done it this way because Kit Marlowe is known as a writer, not as a spy, not as a James Bond type character. So I'm going to rewrite this if I was going to do it to say he focused on writing full time and that possibly he was a secret agent, not that he definitely was, because we have no proof of that. But we do know he moved to London and he began to write full time. So moving on to our next box, we're looking at the end of his life. So this paragraph here when he was killed. So I'm going to start off May the 30th. Now, I have a problem. I don't know what year. I'm going to have to go back to my previous note here. So we've got the date in here, 1593. So when we're looking for our information, we need to be careful that we have the dates. So I'm going to add that in now, 1593. So we have the year, the date. And he was killed by, and we've got the name here, Ingram. Again, make sure you check your spellings for people's names because as times change, the spelling of names changes as well. So Ingram Fraser. So the key events of this one. So again, working in note form, really. So spent the day. So where were we? At a lodging house. Sort of a hotel, a lodging house. So that's that key bit of information there. So fought over the bill. So we have a fight about the bill. And then we're going to look again. Marlowe was stabbed in the forehead. So I'm going to carry on with this note here. So Marlowe. Stabbed in the forehead so stabbed in the forehead and ultimately he was killed so that's the information that we've got from the end of the, his life so that's the events that led up to his death and how it happened. And I've just picked up the real key points here. So I've got the date. I've got what happened. I've got the event leading up to it. So they spent the day at a lodging house. They had a fight about the bill. And then Marlowe stabbed him in the forehead and killed him. Whether or not you wanted to add in some extra detail about the conspiracy theories that carried on, you could use those, but you could use those in your final box for any other information to tie everything for this biography together. So that's how I would have gone about filling my boxes using the information I've got. You might want to add some extra detail in. So your main task. So you need to complete the same boxes I've just completed for your own biography about William Shakespeare. Now, you may have noticed there's starting to be a bit of a theme around Shakespeare. We've got him appearing in geography. He's now appearing in English. So you'll need to do some research yourself to find out the correct information to use. So if you need to 
go back, copy out the box up. Just take the titles for your box. Don't spend too much time writing it out. Have a look for the information online. Kiddle is really useful for finding things that are aimed at our age group and will be more appropriate for information. So you're not going to have to spend hours dragging through page after page of writing. Um, DK Find Out is another really useful resource as well. So use that to have a look through and find out some information about William Shakespeare that will fill those boxes. So you're going to be looking at where he was born, when he was born, early life events, the link to his career, how did he become the famous person that we all know, and look at how he died. Good luck, stay safe. I look forward to seeing the beginnings of your box up some tapestry later today. Take care everybody, and we'll see you back in class really soon.